My name is Abby Ash. I am a part of the Union of Gloucester Educators. Hi everyone, my name is Caroline Yada and I am part of the Beverly Teachers Association. Hey everybody, my name is Ashley Skeffington and I am a 10-year teacher. I'm a member of the Marblehead Education Association. Before we continue, we would like to thank any and all of our veterans and their service and dedication to our country. Please give them a round of applause. Now, we're here, all for the same reasons. We are fighting for equitable and fair contracts. We are done being underserviced, understaffed, and underfunded. Let's hear it! We all have deals on the table that could open schools tomorrow. Manageton, sign that deal. Now, there's a reason why you're here. We have some speakers to hopefully give you some encouragement and get you going. Um, our first speaker is a Gloucester speech pathologist. She is a direct line to the, uh, the crisis that our region is in of being over um, understaffed and over scheduled. Please give it up for the Christine Travers. Good afternoon. Oh, is this one on? Is this one on? Yes, that one's on. You can hear me in the back. Good afternoon, educators, friends, and family. My name is Christine Travers, and I want to welcome you to this beautiful city that many of us call home, Gloucester, Massachusetts. Thank you. Today, I stand before you as a proud Gloucester educator, the granddaughter of a high school graduate and a World War II Purple Heart recipient. Yeah. On this Veterans Day, I know he would be proud of the woman standing here before you, raising her voice for her colleagues, students, and community. I am a speech pathologist. My calling is to help children find their voices and empower them as communicators. I have the best job in the world. I am passionate about what I do, and I've sacrificed a lot to do it over the years. But the last few years, I have, it has become increasingly difficult as we're asked to do much more with far less. I work alongside some of the brightest, most compassionate, and hardworking educators but we can no longer remain silent. We are using our voices. We cannot shoulder the weight alone. We need help. We need help. We are stretched so thin during our workday that we can't complete the legally mandated paperwork that demands hours each week. Instead, we're forced to do it outside of school hours. Special educators rarely get prep time, the time we need to prepare for the multiple groups of students we serve, each with their own unique needs. So we do it on our own time, once again, outside of the school day. We know what our kids need. Our union is asking for paraprofessionals to make a living wage. The school committee, the school committee is refusing to even discuss paraprofessionals. The school committee is committed to keeping our paraprofessionals in poverty. Our union is asking for 10 more minutes of prep time for elementary educators. In response, the school committee has rejected our proposal and demanded we spend more time in administrative meetings. This is simply unsustainable. And let me be clear, 
we will no longer be complicit in the decisions made by management. Every day, I ask my students to face their challenges, to do hard things, to overcome. Today, I'm asking our school leadership to face these challenges without the doomsday forecasting about layoffs. You, you can do hard things. Keep the promises you have made to the students of this community, the promise you reiterate at every school committee meeting. Our mission is for all students to be successful, engaged, lifelong learners. All students. All students. This mission will not be accomplished without support systems in place for all students. All students. As special educators, we represent the most vulnerable and needy students, yet our hands are tied due to staff reductions and the inability to attract and hire service providers with the specialized training our students need. You will not attract nor will you retain the skilled and caring professionals to carry out this mission if you do not show that you respect and value them outside of your false platitudes. <laughs> Finally, a message to our students. We are here today for you. You deserve the best. The best education, the best from your teachers, and the best from your community. We are not backing down. We will keep fighting until we know you are getting the education you deserve. Another round of applause for Christine, everybody. So as many of you know, over the weekend, our elected leaders um, from all districts represented here are trying to break us apart by spreading misinformation, <laughs> using the legal system to scare us. <laughs> but look around. Our solidarity is unbreakable. We are here united. The issues that Christine just shared uh, that are facing educators in Gloucester are the same ones that are facing educators in Beverly. It is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, a fierce Beverly educator at the middle school, Jack Mac uh, McAfee. I'm gonna do this one. Yeah. <laughs> I am Jacqueline McAfee, a 20 year veteran ELA teacher at the Beverly School and a parent of two girls that are students in the Gloucester School District. Yeah. Where do I even start today? Do I elaborate on the amazing work teachers and paraprofessionals and school staff do each and every day? Do I start with the absurdities the local school committees, school committees are putting our communities through? Or do I emphasize again the important platforms we stand on? Safer schools, competitive wages, smaller class sizes, our working condition, and the list goes on. Instead, I want to share some personal insights and examples as a parent of Gloucester students and being a Beverly teacher. My youngest shows it best when the holidays come around, and I don't just mean the big ones around vacations. I'm talking Halloween, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, you name it, and Nora is putting together a teacher gift or craft for those she loves at her elementary school. Nora always, without fail, says, we cannot forget about the help out teachers meaning the paraprofessionals like Miss Jackson, Miss Kim Jemmy, Miss Lane, Miss Doyle, and many others. <laughs> Truth be told, these are people I have never met, but names I hear just as much as any other in the building. 
Before I know it, instead of the typical two or four gifts I assumed she'd make, we are packing boxes of 15 to 20 presents. And that is because any person who helps a child are equal in the eyes of the student. <laughs> Paraprofessionals are physically seen in the classroom as much as teachers. These help out teachers, as Nora says, are what can make the classrooms thrive and make a student feel successful. Every adult in the building has equal opportunity to make an impact or influence any and every student in those classrooms, and they should be valued as such and deserve more. It wouldn't be fair if I only referenced one daughter. My older daughter, Claire, a more quiet and reserved soul, floats through school with a calm demeanor, and my husband and I always wonder if she's being seen or standing out or connecting with her teachers. But she never ceases to amaze us every year when she tells us of a favorite teacher that she looks up to. Or should I say, Gloucester schools never cease to amaze us to have excellent teachers in every grade who notices our daughter. <laughs> every year, she's appreciated, cared for, and valued thanks to so many teachers throughout her life. We keep thinking this will be the year teachers become just an adult, another adult in her life, yet, cliffhanger, <laughs> yet, the hard, endless work of teachers who are not only responsible for a student's understanding of content, but are just as responsible for each student's emotional learning and sense of belonging, Claire continues to admire her teachers. Her love for Ms. Houghton and Ms. Albritton, to name a few, never stop. Thank you, Gloucester teachers and paraprofessionals for being reliable, amazing, and impactful people in the lives of all the children of my hometown. <laughs> teacher myself, I'm completely heartbroken and frustrated that the positive energy and flow I had with my current students has been interrupted due to these unnecessary and avoidable circumstances. I was having a great year, but it has made me so proud to see many of my students support around the clock, like Lil Ames, who gave a fantastic speech at Beverly's rally on Friday. But like any great teacher, I have mastered the skill of pivoting. And I will make it work when we return and I will make each and every student feel welcomed back and included no matter their views, backgrounds, or positions. Because it is our job to be an unbiased, safe space for every student, person, and future citizen. Like all the other great skills of a teacher, like endless patience, unceasing need to serve, unbelievable energy, innate nurturing ability, masters of multitasking, quick thinkers, workers who see no start and stop, but 24 hours of commitment. It is time to put a stop of exploiting these inherent traits in a person, but instead seeing them as valuable qualities in the teaching profession. We yes. deserve more. Yes. I want to leave you with this. My father, also a teacher, often says, says inch by inch, life's a cinch. Yard by yard is when life gets hard. This journey could not have been done without staying focused on the small steps, one at a time crawling up Campaign Mountain. And here we are at the top, not getting discouraged or beaten down, but instead we are feeling empowered, united, and stronger than ever. We have inched together as one to make a great change in the most critical time in our districts. We need to inch just a little bit further now. However, I'm sorry to say, Dad, management needs to pick up the pace and catch up. Thank you. All right, everyone, let's give it up one more time for Jacqueline. Standing in 
front of all of you today, I know that I am currently looking out at the most dedicated group of people, people that care about our kids, that care about our communities, that care about education, and I could not be prouder to be here with all of you today. So thank you all so much. We never should have reached this breaking point, but here we are. And so we are going to keep it moving along. Uh, it is my pleasure right now to introduce one of my colleagues. She is a Marblehead parent and paraprofessional, and she has been one of the voices at the forefront of this incredibly contentious negotiation period. Please give a very warm welcome to Ms. Samantha Rosado. <laughs> everyone. My name is Samantha Rosado and I'm a mom of Marblehead students and a math tutor in Marblehead Public Schools. I am also a member of the Marblehead Education Association's bargaining team. <laughs> Finally, I am honored to be the daughter of an Army veteran who served during the Vietnam War. <laughs> he would absolutely approve of what I'm doing, standing up for what is right. I wanted to be here with you all today to say that Marblehead, Beverly, and Gloucester are in this together and we will not give up. Back in March, at a budget hearing in Marblehead where I was advocating for fully funded schools, I used a quote by Mr. Matthew Lewis, the Vice President of your very own Union of Gloucester Educators. At the time, I never would have imagined that we would be in the same place eight months later, out on strike, fighting for our students, ourselves, and the future of our communities. <laughs> Matt said, we do not fight for ourselves, we fight for one another. The question is not what will happen to me if I stand up for others, but what will happen to others if I don't stand up for them. wholeheartedly agree with Matt, which is exactly why I joined the bargaining team in Marblehead, to stand up for others. Previously, I held the position of a lunch paraprofessional, and shocking to most, but unfortunately not shocking to all of us, was pay I was paid below minimum wage. As I began to participate more in our contract negotiations, I realized how many paraprofessionals, tutors, and other essential education support professionals across the state never had a voice at the bargaining table and were routinely ignored and left behind. Well, that time has changed and enough is enough. In Marblehead, we are one voice. We will no longer be silent while we are disrespected with fast-track contracts, secretive backroom negotiations, poverty wages, and subpar working conditions. We stand together in solidarity with our North Shore educators in Beverly, Gloucester, and Marblehead, fighting for our lowest paid workers, the workers who are routinely tasked with caring for our community's most, most vulnerable learners. Our hourly employees are standing up and fighting for safe schools, modern parental leave, and the pay and respect that we all deserve. The future of public education, the future of our children, and the future of our profession, it is all in our hands. I began my remarks by addressing Beverly, Gloucester, and Marblehead and reminded us that we are all in this together, but it is not just us on the North Shore. We are fighting like Dedham, Brookline, Malden, Haverhill, Woburn, Andover, and Newton, all here today in solidarity with us. And with all education workers across this state, we are showing them what real power looks like. When we fight, we win! Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, 
we love that our parents are out here supporting us, but there is a lost child named Frankie. So if this is your child, he is behind the stage and the crowd behind us. Um, please come and all good. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Never mind that. Okay, ready? One, two, three. We win. When we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. Everyone. So this is a proud moment for me. Uh, we just got a message from Senator Elizabeth Warren in support of us. So I have the pleasure of reading that to you all. Senator Warren says, our educators fight hard for our kids every day. They deserve fair pay, good benefits, and resources, and support for all they pour into our communities. I appreciate those working together to take care of our educators, and I urge local and union leaders in our North Shore communities to continue to come to the bargaining table and quickly come to an agreement so our students can get back to the classroom. Thank you, Senator Warren. So as I look out to all of you, I am in awe of how many families and community members have gathered here today. When educators and families unite, we become an unstoppable force fighting for our students. We have seen such incredible outpouring of support, um, joint families joining us on the picket lines, bringing us food, demanding that our contracts get settled. This unity is what makes our school community strong, and it is my pleasure to welcome two parent and community activists, um, Andrea Liakos and Matt Ferreira. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Yes, my name is Andrea Liakis. Today, I am proud to stand with the educators of Gloucester, both as a parent of two children at O'Malley Innovation Middle School, and also in solidarity as a union representative from the North Andover Teachers Association. This weekend, I have received numerous emails from the Gloucester School Committee about how the children in Gloucester are the ones suffering during this strike. And those emails are right, they are suffering. But make no mistake, the source of that suffering is not at the hands of the Gloucester educators. <laughs> Our children suffer when we no longer have enough paraprofessionals due to over 500 days of inaction from the school committee and an absentee mayor to settle a fair and appropriate contract. <laughs> Our children suffer when educators leave our district to work elsewhere for better wages and a modern paid parental leave policy. Our children are already suffering from cuts to tier two intervention. The students in our schools today need far more support than ever before. Students need a fully staffed, safe place, safe place in their schools to go when they become dysregulated so that they can return to their peers in their classrooms quicker and ready to learn. <laughs> Our students will suffer at the hands of a tone-deaf school committee who fails to see that adding 10 minutes of prep time to an elementary school teacher's day is worth its weight in gold and free. <laughs> Progress over perfection is something educators stress in their classrooms, as well as finding creative solutions. These same concepts apply at the negotiating table. Why aren't our administrators and elective officials brave enough to make progress and think outside the box? Why are they leaving the lion's share of the work to the teachers? We know why. It's because teachers get the job done. They get it done with minimal time and minimal resources and pencils we purchase and sharpen ourselves. <laughs> to those who argue there is going to be a loss of learning during this strike, I say this. In just a few days, my children have learned from their teachers that you should stand up for what you are worth. They have learned from their teachers that you should use your voice loudly to advocate for what you are passionate about and what you need to effectively do your job. 
They have learned from their teachers that when all else fails, you have to do the hard thing you'd hope to avoid. You have to walk out. Their teachers, the real leaders in this city, have taught them about the passion of the Gloucester community and the power of collective action. To the school committee, Mayor Verga, and Superintendent Lummis, I have one question for you. When this is over, what will Gloucester residents, and more importantly, our children, have learned from you? <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, happy Veterans Day. Thank you to our veterans. So my name is Dr. Matthew Ferreira. I'm an Associate Superintendent for Finance and Operations for a public school district just north of us. But more importantly, I'm a resident of Beverly and I have three children currently attending Beverly Public Schools. So I'm not just an administrator, I'm also a parent deeply invested in the success of our schools and the well-being of our teachers. I stand before you today to speak on behalf of something that affects every single one of us, our children's education. Right now, our teachers at the backbone of our school system are facing immense challenges. And it is crucial that we not only recognize their struggles, but also take action to support them. Our schools are in crisis, from insufficient funding to teacher shortages, from rising class sizes to inadequate pay. Our educators are doing more with less, and it's taking a toll. Let me begin by acknowledging the incredible work our teachers do every single day. They are the ones shaping the future of our children. They are the ones who spend hours crafting lesson plans, mentoring students, and creating the environment in which our children can thrive. They are not just instructors, they are counselors, coaches, data collectors, advocates, and nurturers. And yet, far too often, their contributions go underappreciated and underfunded. In Beverly, this reality has never been clearer. As I've written previously, Beverly schools are in a funding crisis. And it's not just Beverly. Our neighbors in Gloucester and Marblehead are facing similar challenges. We have larger class sizes, which mean less individual attention for each student. We're seeing declining student performance as a direct result of not having the resources to support them. And perhaps most troubling, we are facing a special education funding deficit that is impacting our most vulnerable students. <laughs> those students who rely on additional support to succeed in the classroom. This is not just a, a number on a spreadsheet. This is the difference between a student who receives the services they need and one who does not. It's the difference between a child having the tools to succeed or falling behind. Teachers are, the heart of <clears throat> excuse me. Teachers are at the heart of addressing these issues, yet we continue to see them underpaid, overworked, and understaffed. The teacher shortages in our schools is a growing problem. Local, national, and state factors all play a role, but the truth is clear. We are not doing enough to attract and retain our great teachers. When educate... <laughs> I'm used to uh, school, meet, but, but, but school board meetings with no one there, so <laughs> I can just continue. <laughs> Um, when educators are expected to do more with less, we risk losing the very people who dedicate their lives to the education of our children. And let me tell you from my own experience, what you are asking for is not unreasonable. It is fair. Yeah! And it's in the best interest of our communities and our students. I sit on the other side of the table during the bargaining sessions in my own district. I see firsthand the hard work that goes into negotiating fair contracts. I see the sacrifices made by educators and the need to recognize their value. What teachers are asking for is nothing more than what they deserve. 
And that's fair pay, fair working conditions, and the resources to just do their job effectively. We must change this. We must, we must start by ensuring teachers are compensated fairly. This means giving them the wages they deserve, wages that reflect their hard work, their education, and their commitment to our children. And it means providing prayer professionals, those dedicated individuals who work alongside teachers, to provide essential support to students. That includes fair pay, because they too are vital to our children's success. These educators and paraprofessionals are not just staff members. They are partners in shaping the future of our students, and they deserve to be treated with respect and dignity that they have earned. Equally important, we need to increase school funding. Our schools should never have to make the choice between hiring enough teachers, maintaining class sizes, or providing students with the support they need to succeed. We cannot continue to rely on budgets that don't meet the needs of our communities. It It's time for us to advocate for our schools at the, at the local, state, and federal levels and ensure that every child, regardless of their background or ability, has access to the quality education they deserve. Woo! To our teachers and school staff, I want to say this. We see you, we hear you, and we stand with you. I know you're facing tremendous challenges right now as part of the teacher strike, but please know that you are not alone. Parents, families, and the community are rallying behind you. We recognize that you are fighting for better pay, better working conditions, and better support for the students who rely on you every day. The strike is not just about a contract, it's about justice for our teachers, fairness for our students, and securing a future where every child can thrive. To the parents and families here today, please continue to support our teachers. I will, con I will repeat, please continue to support your teachers. Please continue to support your teachers. Show them that they are valued. Your voice matters and together we can make a difference. Whether it's joining in rallies, contacting school committees and elected officials, even those who do not respond, or simply voicing your support to your child's teacher, your actions are critical in this fight. Now is the time to stand together and demand that our educators are supported with the resources that they need to help our students succeed. Our teachers are not just workers. They are investments in the future of our society. Let's give them the tools that they need to do their jobs. Let's give them fair contracts. Let's increase funding for our schools. And above all, let's ensure that every child in Beverly, Gloucester, and Marblehead has the education they deserve. Thank you. What do we want? Fair when do we want it? Now. What do we want? Fair when do we want it? Now. What do we want? Fair contract. Now. Thank you so much to those parents. We would not be here without you. Now, as our parents were sharing their message, we got word from Senator Ed Markey. And here is what he has to say. Our students and families rely on our teachers, paraprofessionals, and school staff for learning, for guidance, for support, and to create an environment that will allow them to maximize their abilities and create a brighter future. It is our job to put students in safe and healthy classrooms first, which requires that we value and support our educators. Yeah! And 
And our educators deserve good wages. They deserve benefits and protections. They deserve a positive working environment that enables them to support students and communities. Beverly, Gloucester, and Marblehead value its educators and believes in investing in the education of all of our students. That is a commitment we all share. Yeah. For the sake of our students and their futures, I urge stakeholders to bargain in good faith and negotiate for a fair and dignified contract. What do we want? And when do we want it? Now! Thank you. Over the past few years, we've seen strikes across the state to fight and win gains for our communities. But we know that these strikes are, not, are about more than just our contracts. They're about fighting to protect public education. Because we all know when public schools are under attack, what do we do? Stand up and fight back. When public schools are under attack, what do we do? to welcome to the stage Barry Davis and Deb Jeswaldo and our strike leaders from across Massachusetts. Give it up. Hello. I'm Barry Davis. I'm the president of the Haverhill Education Association. And two years and a month ago, I stood where you stood on those strike lines. And six months before that, educators from Brookline stood on those strike lines. While I stood on those lines, my siblings in Malden stood with me. Then siblings in Wellesley and Woburn went out. And then last year we saw Andover and Newton. It is time that the elected officials of Massachusetts realize that these are not individual moments, that this is a movement. That our public schools belong to us, the public. That no one who is doing the work of educating the future of our Commonwealth should ever make a poverty wage. That master's level professionals should never have to fight for scraps. It is the time that these school committees realize that these elected positions they fight so hard to win are meaningless. That we win when we educate our children and our community and we have the power. I'm here with all these educators behind me who have stood where you stood. And what we have to say to you is to continue to stand there. We will be behind you. We will support you. We are going to win this fight together. And what you are doing in this region is not only going to change this region, it is going to change the state of Massachusetts. The paid family leave conversation will end because of what you did. We will have it and it will be good. The paras needing a living wage conversation will end and school committees will fold and give paras and ESPs what they deserve. Because people are gonna look up and see what happened when three towns stood up together and fought. Because when we fight, we when we fight, we when we strike, we Good afternoon. My name is Deb Gisvaldo and I am a proud public school music educator, a proud union member, and president of the Malden Education Association. It is 
such an honor to stand here with you today in solidarity as you strike and reclaim the dignity and respect that the school committees and your employers have tried to steal from you. Give yourselves a hand for that. Now, do me a favor. If you're from Beverly, make some noise for me. I can't hear you. Make some noise, Beverly. If you're from Gloucester, make some noise. All right, Marblehead, take a deep breath. Let's hear it from Marblehead. Now, let's hear all Malden, Haverhill, Andover, Brookline, and more. All of those that have struck before you, you are standing up for better working conditions and better learning conditions, and a living wage for education support professionals, because we know that poverty pay is not okay. So, Here's some things I want you to keep in mind as you stand firm in your just and righteous fight and don't let you tell anyone tell you anything different. What you are doing is just and it is right. Yeah. All workers deserve dignity and respect in the workplace. All workers deserve fair and competitive wages. All workers deserve modern and compassionate paid parental leave. Yeah. And this one is specifically for Gloucester. All workers deserve to have their emails responded to by admin within five school days when possible. It's really not asking too much now, is it? You are worth your proposals. Your students are worth your proposals. Your communities are worth your proposals. Do not forget that. Every day that you hold the line for the contracts that you deserve, you are reclaiming that dignity and that respect every day. So hold that line because we are here with you. Stand tall and stand proud knowing that you are joining countless union educators from across the Commonwealth who are standing strong and saying no more business as usual. <laughs> You are standing strong and saying we are going to fight for all of our students in every community and every zip code from Beverly to Gloucester to Marblehead to Malden to Haverhill to Woburn, Andover, Newton, Brookline and beyond. Yeah. And the members of the Malden Education Association and more than 40 local unions who have come together in solidarity will hold that line with you for as long as it takes. Never, ever forget that striking is an act of love and compassion for one another and for students across the entire Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I want to leave you with one last thought. Sometimes what is legal is not always right and what is illegal is not always wrong. Do not forget that. So. Do me a favor, repeat after me. I, 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 believe, I believe, I believe that, I believe that, I believe that we, I believe that we will, I believe that we will win, I believe that we will win, I believe that we will win. Amazing. We're so thankful to have you all here with us today. As a special education teacher for over a decade, I have worked with so many dedicated paraprofessionals. I, simply put, I could not do my job day in and day out if not for the paraprofessionals that work in the trenches with me. They are the heart. Give it up for paras. 
They keep our schools running. They devote their time, blood, sweat, tears alongside us in the trenches. And it is abhorrent what we pay them in Beverly and across the North Shore. So what's outrageous? Poverty wages. 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 It is my pleasure to introduce a dedicated paraprofessional from the Beverly Middle School, Yana Harris. Thank you, everyone. Uh, the big group, that's going to be hard to follow, but I'll do my best. Uh, and I have my speech ready. So I am here today because I work for the Beverly Public Schools. I'm one of the paraprofessionals in the middle school. Yes, thank you. And I mostly work for the kids or with the kids uh, with the special needs. But I also work in a general ed classroom. And many days I am being asked to sub or pull and serve the grades five through eight. So there it goes. And I'm usually the substitute. I have worked for Beverly Public Schools for three years and I do this job because I believe in students and I see their potential and I see them working really hard every day and overcoming uh, problems that they have and overcoming challenges. But the truth is that I don't get to do my best job. Uh, that I really want to, and I don't get a fair chance of working for these kids. Right now, I am making about $23,000 a year for this job. Yeah, fun, right? So, um, which is less than a half of the minimum that you should make if you want to live in Essex County. And I do live in Beverly, so you cannot survive on the money in Beverly, I would say. Uh, on the top of that, we're constantly being pulled from the rolls and fill whatever. There is a gap. We're stretched very thin, covering for the shortages that have become daily norm in lots of schools. Lots and lots of schools, I'm sure in Beverly and also Gloucester and Marblehead and beyond. Uh, when we are short-staffed, it's the students who suffer the most. The students on the IEP, but also the general education students because uh, they don't have the support that they also need some time. So it's very hard for them. Uh, kids aren't receiving the guidance and attention that they need. We can support them in the ways that they need to be supported and when uh, we're uh, spread across multiple roles. Our students deserve stability, the staff who can focus on their growth, not uh, uh, to be sent to another places. And uh, when I'm not there, my students do notice. They stop me in the hallway when they don't see me for a while and they ask me, where are you? When are you coming back? I need your help. Uh, where are you, Mrs. Harris? So uh, they definitely notice. And the worst case scenario usually is when uh, we are pulled from the classroom where we help them out, that they get very easily uh, dysregulated and that definitely affects the general ed students, but also the teachers. It makes it very, very hard for teachers to run the class if the IEP students or other students don't have the support that they need. The social emotional support and the academic support too. It makes it really hard. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, we're here standing together, not only for their wages, for the fair wages, for school systems that respects us all, from the teachers to the paraprofessionals that support the students every single day. We are here for our students too. And as a paraprofessional, I am not a second class citizen. All I'm asking is to be treated with dignity and fairness that every person deserves. Thank you. Because in the end, the strength of our school is measured by how we treat those who serve them. I think everyone can agree with that, right? Or, as one of our students said one time, if I work hard, I want to feel like it matters. And we all want to feel like we matter. The students that need us and all the paras that work hard for them, all the educators, so we really want to feel like we matter too. Thank you. Thanks. Yana, thank you so much. Um, on a personal note, 
My mother is a parent at Salem Public Schools. Um, and if you, if you don't know, they settled a pretty killer contract earlier this year. Uh, and I've seen firsthand how hard our paraprofessionals work. They go above and beyond for our students. So I just want to affirm everything that you just heard. They deserve the absolute best, and we are here to fight for them. So thank you. So I want to take a moment to invite all of you in the crowd to look around you. Uh, I want you to take a moment to look at the people that you may know that you don't know who are surrounding you today. And I want to remind all of you that we are in this fight together, trying to build better working conditions for our educators. And I also want to remind you that we are part of a bigger labor, labor movement that is fighting to the big, sorry, fighting to, wow, the big, the schools, what? I think that's a typo. We want, these, we want our schools to be better, we want a fair contract, and we want this, we deserve it. Sorry, something, I, wow, that went poorly. That's all right, you're picking up what I'm putting down. <laughs> At this time, it is my pleasure to welcome to the stage the president and the vice president of the MTA, Max Page and Deb McCarthy. Before I begin, I do want to honor my aunt, Maureen Dunn, who co-founded the POW MIA movement, and to offer my deepest respect to all veterans out here today. Um, thank you. And Andre, yes, I had to write this down. It's been a long week, so I'm sorry. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Deb McCarthy, and I am an educator. My mother was an educator, my sister was an educator, my daughter is an educator, and my daughter-in-law is an educator. Thank you. Collectively, we have over 125 years experience on the job, and collectively, we want you to know that we stand in solidarity with the educators in Beverly with the educators in Gloucester, and with the educators in Marblehead. Your fight is our fight. We know that when you fight for the working conditions that all educators deserve, you are fighting for the learning conditions that all students deserve. As educators, we know the public school educators have been disrespected and treated less than for far too long. We know that when you stand up and speak out for the injustices and the inequities at your job site, in your classrooms, you do so for the betterment of the collective. You do so for your commitment to public education. But you really do so because you love your students and your communities. And finally, I want to share that besides being a grandmother, excuse me, besides being an educator, I am also a grandmother to nine. And six of those nine have moms who are educators. So when you fight, for smaller class sizes and the right to emotionally and physically safe environments for all, you are not only fighting for the working conditions that my grandchildren's moms deserve, you are fighting for the public education that my grandchildren and all children deserve. So as an educator, I thank you, and as a grandparent, I love you. For all that you are doing, we will be with you every single day and every step of the way. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Good afternoon. My friends, this is a, such a beautiful sight, and I'm not talking about the ocean view. I'm talking about all of you. Think about it. 
educators, unionists, parents, the community, students, all together here to defend public education. Is there anything more beautiful than that? I first want to say that we're in the middle of this struggle, but I do want to offer congratulations to everyone for crushing it on question two. 59 to 41, well done, everyone. I know that's long in the past now, but we're in this struggle, but remember that statewide victory just a few days ago. My message to you is very simple. We are your people, you are our people. We are together in this. You are Gloucester, Beverly, and Marblehead, but you are part of the mighty Massachusetts Teachers Association. 117,000 members. 400 locals across the entire Commonwealth. You're also part of an AFL-CIO of a half a million workers. You will not go through this struggle alone. And it is because you are fighting for yourselves, as you should, for your students right now, but you are fighting for all future educators in the North Shore and all future students all across the Commonwealth. Think about it that when you are, there are some retired people here I know, but many of you active workers, when you are in your retirement, you will be able to look back and realize that you advance the rights and justice for paras. You will have secured paid parental leave and ultimately, as Barry Davis said, we will no longer be arguing about this because everyone will have what they should have, which is paid parental leave as they need it. And we will have safe and healthy schools for all our kids, the class sizes, the supports that they deserve. So please know the MTA and all of us will be with you through this to the end. As a famous leader, Frederick Douglass said, without struggle, there is no progress. And we will be in this struggle with you until the very end. Thank you. you being here. So I just want to note that the reason that we're all here today is because of our students. So if you're a student out there, I want you to make some noise right now. We love our students. We teach our students every day about how to advocate for themselves. We try to guide them through challenges of today's world, giving them the tools they need to be successful. The next speakers are students who I am inviting to the stage. They have become our best teachers in standing up for injustices and fighting for what is right. Please help me in giving a warm welcome to Haley Groey from Marblehead High School. And Lexi Thomas, Lexi Thomas from Gloucester High School. Good afternoon. My name is Haley Groey, and I'm a junior at Marblehead High School and a member of the varsity cheer team. Additionally, I want to say thank you to my grandpa for his 25 years of service in the Air Force. I am here today because simply put, I believe in standing up for what is right, even when it's hard or breaks rules. I love my teachers. I know what good teachers look like because I recently transferred back to Marblehead High School from a prestigious private school and I've been wowed by my teachers' commitment to their jobs. I realize that to create change, there needs to be action. Unfortunately, teachers are being pulled away from their students in classrooms and leaving behind their joy of educating to fight for fair contracts. In the past, Marblehead schools have had top ratings and have been the catalyst for why people like my parents moved to our town. However, our rankings have recently plummeted. I am afraid if this trend continues and teachers' demands are ignored, we will be unable to hire high-quality educators like the ones who taught me in my earlier years. I used to know teachers by name, but now either teachers have left or are in the process of leaving our district. I know how hard teachers work. As a student, I have observed teachers such as my AP European History teacher, Mr. Butters, come in as early as 6.30 in the morning and meet early, early mornings and late afternoons or during his lunch hour. 
My teachers look at learning beyond contractual times. They see learning as an ongoing process, not limited to a scheduled appointment. I know this firsthand because my mom is a special ed teacher in Marblehead. She works weekends, summers, and nights to meet the needs of her students and our family. There are even times when I've asked, can I have mom time? Because she has pulled away a lot. Whether it's emails, phone calls, or helping her colleagues with understaffed situations, my mom is a superhero. I'm so proud of my mom and the fact that she chose teaching as a, prof as a profession. As I've seen through observing my mom, and in the words of Taylor Malley, a poet and teacher, teachers make kids wonder, teachers ask questions, they make students criticize, they make students apologize and mean it. Teachers make students write, they make them read, read, read. Teachers make parents see their children for who they are and who they can be. Lastly, and ending with the words of Taylor Malley and why I am here today, teachers make a goddamn difference. Hi everyone. My name is Lexi Thomas and I'm honored to be speaking in front of you today. Thank you to members of the Gloucester, Marblehead, and Beverly communities for joining us at the beautiful Stage 4 Park to stand for just and fair contracts for our respective schools. My statement today will hope we hopefully bring light to our school districts and the importance of standing up for teacher and student rights. As a student involved in many extracurriculars, as most of you know, all with teachers putting so much time and love in each and every one, I am disheartened by the fact they are not being respected by the committee in power to ensure their health and safety. We all love Miss D'Antonio, but we also have to love Alyssa. We all love Miss Stackhouse, but we also have to love Anne Marie. We all love Mr. Gentile, but we also have to love Rory. We all love Mr. Lee, but we also have to love Eric. We all love Miss Christina, but I also love my mom. We love our teachers as teachers, but we need to love and respect them as well as human beings and giving them adequate resources to be safe and healthy. As the contract for GTA stands, I don't believe we are giving them that. Simple aspects of an adequate contract, such as email response time, which even as students we are taught to adhere to, and elementary prep time, which boils down to elementary teachers working more for no increase in pay, are clear, no-cost no aspects, as Rachel Salvo-Rex states, are low-hanging fruit for the school committee to negotiate. Yeah. Additionally, as a woman hoping to have children of her own one day, the current proposal for 10 days of paid parental leave is blatantly sexist and inhumane for our female teachers, especially considering as more districts have upwards of four times more time to spend in the hospitals and at home caring for their babies and themselves. Furthermore, our paraprofessionals need to be addressed here as well. Through educating myself on the matter of educator contracts, I have discovered that I make more an hour than the first step para in Gloucester. Let that sink in for a second. Me, an 18 year old sales associate for a jewelry and crystal shop, makes more an hour than paras that get scratched, hit, punched, and overworked daily. Yeah. For context, for context, the most harm I've ever been in contact with in regards, to my draw, in regards to my job is dropping a rock on my toe. Our paraprofessionals help teachers function properly in their classrooms. They go through hell and back daily purely for the love they have for their fellow teachers and above all else, their students. Yeah. As the varsity cheer captain, slated to head to her fourth straight regional competition, and seeing fellow competitors from Beverly fully prepared to go, I am disheartened not only for myself, but for Haley and the Marblehead cheer team who have been told they have no more games to cheer for and no regional competition in their future. I would also say congratulations to Marblehead football team on their 42 to six win in the first round of the playoffs, yet it feels misplaced considering their football team has to stop their drive for a state title due to the inability for their school committee to negotiate. Please 
please don't make me tell my freshman girls that they can't compete in their first of many important cheer milestones. Please don't make me tell my team that their competition dream for a state title is gone. Please don't let all of the hard work these girls have put into their season be gone. And yes, we are an all-female team, the only Gloucester female team in postseason sports. <laughs> Gloucester High School senior class president. I am extremely proud of each and every student standing up and supporting their teachers at various, various rallies, press conferences, and on social media. The amount of support for our teacher, teachers as they settle this contract is overwhelming, and I applaud every student in the GHS community for their efforts and their support. To the class of 2025, we will resume traditional senior activities as soon as every educator in Gloucester High School and in the Gloucester Public School District is properly paid, cared for, and respected. Yeah. To everyone listening today, teachers would rather be teaching, students would rather be learning, athletes would rather be playing, Drama kids would rather be performing. Cheerleaders would rather be competing. But this is important. Let's give back to the people who have given so much for us to thrive as learners, artists, performers, and athletes. Let's be on the right side of Gloucester history and let's support our educators. Thank you. Lexi or Haley as students, but I am a proud teacher up here, and I hope you in the crowd as well. We miss you, students, and we hope to get back to you as soon as possible. Before we move on, I just wanted to reach out and tell you all that we have other teacher unions here supporting us as well. Some of them are AFT, Boston Teachers Union, Peabody, Salem, Lynn, Northeast Consortium, Norfolk Aggie, Mass Library Staff Association, and if we have not named you, please come find us and let us know that you are here. Thank you so much for being here in support of us. Our next speaker is a part of our paraprofessional group in Gloucester. She is one of those educators that is being ignored, is being told she's not worth being talked about at our bargaining tables. Well, let's give her the time and the day now. Please help me introduce Trisha Reed. <laughs> I'm Trisha Reed. I'm a para at Plum Cove Elementary. <laughs> to switch my glasses because I can't see with the sun in my eyes. I have a hard follow with Lexi Thomas, who I've known since she was two years old. Her mom was my children's preschool teacher. It goes deep in this town. All right. I'm a behavior power at West Parish Elementary. I've worked for this district for 11 years. I'm a single mom who has to work multiple jobs to help offset not making a living wage working for Gloucester Public Schools as an ESP. My day starts by dropping off my high schooler, bringing, going to school, working there, leaving there three to four nights a week, going to my second job, then going home, putting mom hat back on, doing daily chores, all the things that you all do. You know, I get home, I have to do that, get up, do it all over again. One job should be enough. I am tired, so tired of being treated like I am less than, like I am not worth my work. I work hard. I work in multiple classrooms on a daily basis. Every day, I'm pulled in many different directions. I could be assisting in a classroom for support. I could be covering for a staff member who may be absent. I could be out at recess or in the lunchroom doing duty. I could be in the hallway helping doing interventions with students who need that or who are having a hard time just working in the classroom. I work over the summer. I can't remember the last time I sat at the dinner table with my three kids. 
I should not have to do this. I should not have to beg again for what? Poverty pay? That's not okay. Thank you. I sit at the bargaining table. I am on the negotiation team. I am on our e-board. You know, I can't remember again the last time in the 20 months that I've been doing this. If I'm not at work, my other second job, that I'm not on a Zoom, I'm not on a meeting, I'm not doing paperwork for all of this. Again, Gloucester, Beverly, Marblehead, thank you for supporting this. Thank you for being here. ESPs, we deserve more. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Uh, while we're talking about members of our bargaining teams out there, uh, do we have bargaining team members out there? I know we have some from Marblehead. Can you make some noise for me, please? Woo! You probably know this if you've talked with these people, but it is incredibly stressful to be in the room where it happens. And I just want to say we are so grateful for the fight that you are putting up at the table, provided people decide they want to show up at the table. But that's a different story. Uh, so our next speaker is someone who actually was recently shouted out on an Instagram account that we started uh, in Marblehead called Marblehead Success Story. So in the wake of all of this, it's all been super, super stressful. Um, we've been trying to share stories of success in Marblehead Public Schools. And this particular person uh, is one of my colleagues at the high school. Uh, she's also a class advisor, and it came to nobody's surprise whatsoever that she was one of the people who was shouted out. So please, I would like for you to give a very warm welcome to Sarah McGrail. Hi, I'm Sarah McGrail, and I've taught in Rebelhead High School for the last eight years. I'm here today fighting for modern paid parental leave one that will allow a parent to recover physically, mentally, and emotionally, and give them time to sufficiently bond with their new child. I am now pregnant with our third child. I don't have enough sick time to cover a maternity leave and some of it will be unpaid. During this pregnancy, I've worked through severe morning sickness, and we are once again relying on family members to come care for our children when they get sick and they cannot go to daycare. In an effort to save days for our leave. My story is important because as a teacher, especially as a family of teachers, it is not unique. We had our first child in April of 2020. I worked on the day I gave birth. And I came back two weeks later to teach children virtually with her on my lap because that's what my students needed at the time. My husband became a teacher in September of 2020 in the middle of hybrid learning. <laughs> we spent many virtual lessons passing on our daughter back and forth when she couldn't go to daycare. We always joke that she learned a lot of algebra that year. The pandemic was the only reason I had enough sick time to take a paid leave when I gave birth to our second child 18 short months later in October of 2021. <laughs> yep. Following that leave, I returned to work sooner than I should have struggling with postpartum depression and anxiety. Immediately after returning from that leave, our family caught COVID and I was forced to use the rest of my available sick time for the year. This led us to relying on family members to use their sick time and take care of our kids whenever they got sick. And guess what? Those daycare germs didn't stop coming. The amount of sick time we have should not dictate family size or our ability to recover postpartum. We should not be forced to return to work while dealing with postpartum depression. Yeah. 
just because we can't afford to take the time to take care of ourselves. The practice of planning our pregnancies for the right month to ensure that we have an adequate leave must end. It is, tied for a pay, it is time for a paid parental leave that is equal and accessible to education workers, just as it is to workers in the private sector. Families should be able to bond together and support each other as they introduce a new child into their family. Teachers should not have to choose between taking care of their families and getting a paycheck. So we have some more um, uh, districts around us that are with us. Manchester, Essex, Rockport, Fitchburg, and Wellesley. Thank you so much for being here. our speakers for this afternoon we just want to take a moment to give our thanks all of you for being here today standing with us in solidarity we are fighting united for what's right in Gloucester in Marblehead in Beverly across the North Shore we love you guys thank you so much and can I invite Jen and Casey to lead us in some chants as we rock out Okay. What do we want? Fair when do we want it? Now. What do we want? Fair when do we want it? Now. What do we want? Fair when do we want it? Now. When I say union, you say power. You 